Hi and welcome to the Demalot Cookery Channel. So today is a DIY project rather than a recipe video and I'm going to be making a homemade distillery. So I've been a big fan of essential oils for quite some time, especially with regard to the health benefits and antibacterial qualities of essential oils. But the biggest problem with essential oils is that they are very expensive to buy. So the homemade distillery that I'm going to show you today is absolutely ideal for extracting essential oils from plants that we can basically grow in the garden. Now I'm going to give a full shopping list of everything that you're going to need to buy at the end of the video but I'm, I also want to show you those items now so you've got a good visual idea of what you need to actually get okay so the kit that we're going to need for today I've got a 30 litre builders bucket so this is what plasters will use to mix plaster got this from screw fix I think it was 7.99 We've got 10 metres of microbore copper pipe and this is 10 mil microbore copper pipe again from somewhere like Screwfix about £22 in the UK. I've got a just a standard um, pressure cooker for the kitchen. This one's an 11 litre off eBay for £24.99. You don't have to have one this big but the way I'm going to build this particular um, distillery, we can still we're still able to use the um, pressure cooker for normal cooking in the kitchen if we want to. I personally couldn't afford to buy a pressure cooker just for this particular project. If you've got one lying about, you never use, and that's fine. Um, or just you can easily get these secondhand. Just make sure that when you buy it. If it is second hand that the actual seal which goes around the inside is of a decent quality just check it all over if the seal goes it means you're just gonna have to buy a new seal the other things we're going to need is something to form the uh, copper pipe around that is actually obviously smaller slightly smaller than the bucket you're going to use so this will be used to wrap the copper pipe around to create a coil. Also going to need, the way I'm going to do the project, a really decent um, silicone but also a, uh, an adhesive as well. So this is my go-to uh, bonding and, and sealing sealant. Um, sticks all, really decent stuff. Uh, just try and get something like that. I've also got one metre of braided tubing, plastic tubing, and this is eight millimetres internal diameter. The reason for that is we've got 10 mil pipe. Also on this particular um, pressure cooker, this fitting is around 10 mil, so this pipe's gonna go over the top. So with this being eight mil, we're going to create a really decent seal over both the copper pipe and the top of the uh, pressure cooker. Also going to need a couple of um, uh, clips in order to fasten the tubing in with. So these are 10 to 16 mil um, clips. I'm going to use a grommet. So this is a 20 mil grommet to, to create a exit for the copper pipe on the actual bucket itself. Now you can just put the pipe through and seal around it if you like but I think this is going to work a lot better because on one side we've got like a deep cavity so the idea is that part of the grommet will sit on the, the inside of the bucket and then once the pipe passes through that I'm going to fill all of this with sealant to create a really decent bond. But you don't have to use that, you can just put the pipe straight through also going to need a, a drill and I've got a 19 millimeter um, spade drill bit not ideal for going through plastic but it's the only thing I've got and then on this old bucket 
I've just made sure that the just look at this. I've just made sure that the um, the grommet actually fits in the hole created by the spade drill bit nicely. Again, if you're not sure, get something old like an old bucket and just do a test uh, drill first to, to make sure that it works properly. Also going to need some sandpaper and a uh, file as well. Okay, with regard to the actual pressure cooker itself, as I said, I want to be able to use this for normal cooking, so I'm not going to adapt this in any way. Also, I'm an ex-firefighter, I've got a healthy respect for pressure vessels, and these uh, safety devices here are there for a reason. If you want to start altering these safety devices, taking them off, capping them off or whatever, and there's plenty of videos out there about building these home, homemade distilleries where people don't seem to really care and alter these um, to basically their own specification, that's fine, that's up to them. If this project involved having to take off these safety valves, I wouldn't have got involved in it in the first place. So basically there's nothing to do with regard to uh, having to prepare the um, pressure cooker apart from the valve we're going to be using is this one and on this it's it's central not all pressure cookers are the same and this is one that has the, the heavy weight on top so basically what happens is when the pressure cooker is being used and uh, steam pressure builds up inside the pressure cooker this weight actually floats and as the pressure builds, it lifts up and allows um, the steam to escape. It's calibrated, so it's a weight that's calibrated uh, with regard to the amount of pressure that this is designed to take. And again, as the pressure builds, this will lift up. If you're using an old pressure cooker that's been in the garage for a while, or you're buying one from a yard sale or whatever, and this is already attached. So when this actually came new, this wasn't actually attached you just simply pull it off because underneath these weights it's just two springs that go over here and just hold it in place so if that's on we need to take that off so just pull it and it will just come off quite easily so as I said that's the valve we're going to use to put the hose over the top and then this is where the steam will escape from So the most challenging part of this whole project is to form this microball pipe around a circular object like the bucket in order to create a coil. So the thing about microball pipe is it's quite soft, it can be manipulated by hand and around a large circumference like this it's not too difficult. The problem with this kind of pipe is without something like an external spring which sits over the top and prevents it from kinking, if you try and get the radius too tight it will definitely kink. So you've got to be mindful of that. Now you can buy one of these small external springs which slide over the top and then as you bend it, it just protects the internal radius and stops it from kinking. You can buy one of those. I haven't got one, um, so I'm just going to have to be careful. So the next job is to take the microball pipe and I'm going to wrap it in a coil all the way around the bucket. So this is that copper coil formed around the bucket. I'm glad I didn't film that process, it wasn't pretty I'll tell you. So what I basically had to do was get somebody else to help me. So they held it at the bottom, so you imagine we had that large coil and then almost like driving a bus if you like or driving a car, just kept turning it until it obviously wrapped tightly around the bucket so we got to the end but it wasn't that easy probably a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be but it was still quite hard and obviously we have to make sure that we don't flatten or kink any of the um, any of the copper so that's that bit done as I said that is definitely the most for me anyway the most challenging part of this whole project so let's move on to the next bit Right, next thing to do is to drill a hole in the bottom of this uh, builder's bucket and I'm going to be doing that about two centimetres up from the base 
using that uh, spade drill bit because I'm not using the correct drill bit for this job I've also got a, uh, a length of wood which I've cut to size so this sits just in the bottom of the uh, bucket because we need something to support the inside of the bucket as we go through with this drill bit if we don't do that the chances are that the um, around the hole is going to shatter and we'll get leaks you might not even be able to see the fracture points but they'll definitely be there supporting the inside with a, a piece of wood will hopefully eliminate that happening so I've drilled a hole in the bottom of the bucket I've then got sandpaper and the file just to make sure there's no burrs at all on the inside or the outside with regard to our copper coil so I've taken it off the bucket and this is going to be the bottom so all I've done is just carefully manipulated it so that it actually comes in a little bit first in order to go through the hole because we want to try and get it through the hole as straight as possible and it's also stepped up as well so this is going to sit on the bottom of the bucket and then it'll come up and be level to go straight through the the hole next thing we want to do is place the coil inside the bucket and just feed that end of the copper pipe through so we've basically got that now with our rubber grommet I've just drilled an 8mm hole in the centre and obviously our pipe's 10mm so that's going to create a nice seal so the next thing we want to do remembering that if you're using one of these electricians grommets so these grommets are basically what goes into the uh, metal casing of a um, of a socket electrical outlet to cap off any um, any unused holes so just remember that the cavity part will be going on the inside so that's how I want to place it over the copper pipe just like that so we've got a nice seal around that copper pipe and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some silicone on the outside and the inside and then manoeuvre this into place Alright, so let me just show you this. So we've got that seal around the bottom. We'll just need that to set, otherwise the grommet will pop out. And then the next job on the inside, again hopefully you can see that's sealed on the inside. So we're just going to slowly pull this coil up, just stretch it out until it comes to the top. Just make, try and make it as even as possible. And again, we'll do that once the silicone adhesive is set around that grommet. Okay, so let me show you where we are with this. So we've got our outlet there with the grommet. All, all that's now sealed in. The coil, I have extended that up. Might do a little bit more work on it to make it just a tiny bit more sort of tidy than that. But then what I thought to do let me just work around here to show you so in order to stabilize the coil and fasten everything in place the handle from this builders bucket I just got a 10 mil um, drill bit placed it I'll just show you on this one so the hook that holds the handle on placed a 10 mil drill bit in there and then used a pair of mole grips to bring that together and then passed the coil under it so what that's actually done is fastened everything in place nicely so I might leave this that long or just maybe just cut it down a bit so that's basically our bucket all finished so the next thing I want to do is to attach the braided hose to the 10mm copper pipe so this is a really 
it's going to be a really tight fit. So what I've done is I've just used that file just to create a chamfer on there. I'm going to get a hairdryer, heat this up so that it becomes more supple. Use something just to open that up slightly. Slide that over the top. Put our Jubilee clip in place and just tighten this. Don't over tighten the Jubilee clip because you don't have anything protecting the structure of the copper pipe and there is a possibility you might start crushing it. So just tighten it up until it's nice and nice and tight but not too tight. Okay so the hairdryer did the job just made it supple enough to go over the top of the copper pipe. Next thing to do is just to fasten up the Jubilee clip and then this part is done. So the only other thing to do, and obviously we would only be setting it up when it was actually in the kitchen, so when the pressure cooker sat on the hob, and this is sat just below, is to connect this part of the hose. And it's just a simple case of second jib jibbly clip over the top. Just push that in place to keep working it down, and then obviously fasten the jubilee clip and then that's the whole system set up okay so that's the first part of the project done the actual building of the kit in the second video i'm obviously going to go through how to use it and let's see what results we get Honestly, this project was easier than I thought it was going to be. I had real reservations about coiling that copper around the bucket, but with two people, one of them holding the bottom, the other one just almost like steering that coil of uh, copper tighter and tighter around that bucket, it was actually quite easy. Please subscribe to the channel, and as usual, if you've enjoyed this particular video, hit the like button, and don't forget to watch out for the second video in this series.